inviting me to participate in this Congress. My presentation will be in keeping with uh, what Andre has said. Coronaviruses, according to the classification, are composed of uh, uh, four types, alpha, beta, uh, gamma, and delta coronavirus viruses. They're classified according to their genomic sequences. Alpha, alpha and beta uh, infect mammals. Gamma and delta can infect avians as well as some types of mammals. Alpha and beta um, cause respiratory diseases. There are seven coronaviruses known to date, including SARS, MEVA, COV, two and four seasonal coronaviruses that are presented on the slide today. They cause um, mild respiratory lesions. Some severe infections can be observed, especially among infants and the elderly populations. Most of the viruses um, relate to the beta coronavirus group. As far as the origins are concerned, uh, the key reservoir are bats. Five out of seven viruses came from bats. Two of the coronaviruses, including HC OV1, um, come from mammals. The new coronavirus that causes COVID um, comes from mice and can be transferred through an intermediary host. Their RNA uh, length is um, uh, 32,000 um, of uh, uh, nucleotides. Apart from that, coronavirus cis can be expressed in minority structural proteins, and they also access, uh, express uh, 16 non-structural proteins that regulate viral replication and interaction with the host, um, suppressing the innate um, immune response. SARS-CoV-2 Um, contains a protein that um, uh, composes um, an, um, a receptor binding domain and a final domain. Uh, the, um, uh, they can be seen as the key targets for um, the medications against the virus. There is also a transmembrane um, site that um, carries this protein to the surface of the viral membrane. The first research um, on the uh, spatial structure of the coronavirus um, protein um, appeared as early as in January, uh, February. Uh, they were compared with um, the proteins of uh, the S um, virus of SARS. The spatial structure is quite conservative. And about from small modifications, it's consistent with the structure of S proteins of all coronavirus as far as the receptor specificity is concerned. Uh, the receptors um, differ um, the um, ACE enzyme is the key receptor for the coronavirus. For certain seasonal coronaviruses, there are other receptors can be identified, including ACL acids. Despite the uh, despite the outbreaks of uh, um, several imported infections, even though the virus circulates um, in the environment and is well known, before COVID, the uh, viruses were not sufficient to create 
effective medications of vaccines. Seasonal viruses were largely overlooked by research, but the COVID outbreak helped to initiate um, different research aimed at creating different vaccines. So part of the um, research that is ongoing are preclinical, part of them are clinical. There have been no registered vaccines so far, um, which explains why we we're not ready for the ongoing COVID epidemic. On the other hand, the experience that was accumulated in developing vaccines against SARS, which was obtained uh, through the analysis of seasonal um, coronaviruses, um, provides us with a background for um, ongoing research on um, vaccine development. This is the WHO draft landscape of uh, COVID-19 candidate vaccines. 13 of them are at the preclinical trial stage. 129 vaccines are in preclinical evaluation. So you can see the vaccines on the uh, left. They include inactivated uh, live attenuated protein subunit DNA-based, RNA-based, uh, and other vaccine categories. So all categories involved in um, vaccine development are being used. Which of the vaccines is going to work most effectively is difficult to say, but let us try to draw some parallels with the available data on uh, the vaccines and um, uh, uh, for the uh, seasonal viruses. And to exaggerate um, some uh, key aspects uh, for the development of uh, the coronavirus vaccines. The key factor for the antigen development is the uh, so-called S protein. Different coronaviruses can induce different cross-reactive uh, um, antibodies. One of the studies showed that um, OS43 uh, can induce um, antibodies against us. <coughs> the selective data. The selective data shows um, some amount of cross-reactivity. Um, a number of studies um, uh, looked at the affinity of the coronavirus with uh, um, AS receptors, the um, affinity for the coronavirus is much higher compared to SARS. Um, monoclonal antibodies um, were studied that bind to the um, uh, SARS um, proteins compared with um, COV2. Um, there was no binding. However, um, later studies showed that specific cross-reactive antibodies between the um, between SARS and seasonal um, coronaviruses still exists. So these are the results of a study that identified monoclonal as uh, 309 antibodies. And it showed that it neutralizes um, COV2 quite effectively. Cryoelectronic microscopy um, showed that this monoclonal antibody recognizes an epitope uh, containing a glycane um, that um, remains conservative in uh, certain viruses. So. Monoclonal antibodies can uh, be quite effectively formed, and when we develop the vaccines, um, it's, uh, it would be good to um, uh, consider um, uh, to consider the attachment patterns. The issue of cross reactivity requires close investigation because. 
enhancement of infection can be antibody dependent. Um, so nowadays, the discussion about AD in uh, coronavirus has um, quite quieted down, but um, still, this um, issues that was heatedly debated in the um, past has not been answered yet. Published data exist about uh, the um, coronavirus and SARS. DME. This mechanism can underlie complicated um, progression of um, COVID-19. On the other hand, ATE may form as a result of uh, the vaccine administration, and this is one of the key dangers that uh, we can um, confront in developing the vaccine. The um, antibodies, um, uh, the antibodies in many cases um, facilitate penetration of uh, COVID-19 into whole cells. ADE also uh, impacts the immune response and can cause um, lymphopenia or sit against home. ADE may occur in case of um, the contact with uh, homologous um, epitopes uh, present in the proteins of uh, phylogenetic related viruses. Uh, whether ADE is present uh, in um, COVID-19 uh, and what micro uh, and what molecular mechanisms underlie it is one of the key questions in fundamental and clinical virology of coronaviruses. And um, I hope um, good responses to these questions can be obtained in the nearest future. As far as the antibody response is concerned, this is determined by the quantity and quality or the neutralizing capacity of the antibodies. Highly um, high affinity antibodies that recognize a bit of piece of uh, superficial proteins may block uh, viral proliferation. The viral neutralization effect um, is considered to correlate with uh, the amount of antibodies um, and its affinity. So um, if uh, the uh, binding falls, be, uh, falls beneath a certain threshold, this may activate AD and similar mechanisms. Antibodies with highest affinity may reach this threshold at lower concentrations and may ensure better efficiency. The type of vaccine that will be used must create sufficient antibodies with sufficiently good specificity. This balance will enable us to get an efficient immune response, which will make it possible to avoid um, complications such as CD. Um, the um, administration um, Type the administration um, mode um, is um, also important. For example, uh, intranasal uh, mode um, could reduce lung pathologies for SARS-CoV-2. So intranasal vaccination might have certain benefits compared to intramuscular vaccination. Another issue I would like to mention is that immune response efficiency, antibody response efficiency, will be determined by the appropriate confirmation of antigens. And this is a picture that we have seen um, in case of uh, immunoviruses. And the same happens with the same applies to um, other infections such as COVID-2. 
the structure of the protein shows that SARS-CoV-2 uh, uh, contains a sequence that can be depleted by furine. The efficiency of uh, this depletion will be highest after the virus um, has withdrawn from the epithelial cells, which will enable the virus to infect other cells. For SARS, glycoprotein uh, will not be depleted, will not be uh, split um, in the cells. Um, uh, the protease will be more um, active in this case. The proteases um, that um, are contained in the body system will uh, react to the protein in a certain way. The correct conformation of the protein may depend on the proteases um, that will be present in um, case when the vaccine is administered. A lot has been said about the cellular immune response, immune response, which is also important. A number of studies, one of which was published in Cell, study the immune response for SARS-CoV-2. The sample was fairly small, just 20 subjects, uh, but the data are interesting. It was shown that the uh, recovered patients in 100% of the cases had uh, SARS-CoV-2 CD-specific uh, uh, plus T cells. The protein correlated with um, IgG and IgA levels. Um, the protein um, also reacts to a number of other proteins that are presented on the slide. In the population of non-infected um, SARS non uh, SARS um, COVID non-infected uh, residents, um, SARS CoV two reactive CD four T cells were detected, suggesting cross-reactive cell recognition be between circulating common cold coronaviruses, seasonal coronaviruses. which is a good development in terms of uh, cross-productivity between the two viruses. And this important fact must be considered in uh, vaccine development um, for SARS-CoV-2 and other vaccines that can provide better protection against coronaviruses. So the data that are available to us now um, based on the study on uh, MERS, SARS, and common cold coronaviruses. It can be suggested that there is a certain amount of cross-productivity between T cell and to a lesser degree B cell um, immune responses between SARS-CoV-2 and seasonal coronaviruses. Another question, another issue that is highly relevant is the uh, length, the span of the immune response, how long lasting it is going to be as time span. <coughs> um, these data were published in a preprint article. We hope that. Um, they will be retained following the editing in patients um, of uh, 35 years of age. Um, several full seasonal human coronaviruses were studied um, 
including their antibody levels for, uh, following infection and the time period after which reinfections by the same virus can occur. Um, this data enables us to make certain conclusions. The number of uh, reinfections was fairly high. The time span of the natural immune response to seasonal coronaviruses was fairly short, averaging from 6 to 12 months. So um, vaccination does, uh, is unlikely to result in um, lifelong T-cell viral response. The 35 years, uh, years of studies um, um, of uh, seasonal coronaviruses um, prompts um, that um, this conclusion is correct. Um, now let us focus on uh, uh, the comparison between um, the host response to um, SARS-CoV-2 compared to seasonal coronaviruses. A transcription, full-scale transcription analysis was um, uh, conducted based on animal and patient models. Um, and co uh, whereby COVID was compared with um, SARS, MERS, RSV, and a number of other infections. The study indicates that compared to other viruses, SARS-CoV-2 introduces low interferon 1 and 3 levels with a moderate ICG response. So the first mechanism of uh, immune response, the innate immune response uh, for uh, SARS-CoV-2 is highly attenuated. Um, on the other hand, strong chemokine expression is um, um, observed. And uh, it occurs in cytokine uh, interleukin 1 and 6. Certain F positive effect can be observable. The reason I decided to include this slide is that weak innate immune response will mean that in case of vaccination, the vaccine must be very effective because uh, innate immune response will not, is not likely to eliminate the virus. The immune response induced by the vaccination must presuppose um, the um, um, must presuppose strong immune response uh, in case of vaccine administration. We're currently working on two types of vaccine. One of them is developed in the Flu Institute. Uh, Marina Stukova's laboratory. We're using two options here. The vector is the attenuated uh, flu, uh, uh, flu virus, and uh, we'll also consider the sites um, binding with uh, protein receptors and another option that is based on the induction of T cell response. The second um, variant of the vaccine is based on self-replicating RNA, based on the viral replicon. Um, we're studying the receptor binding domain uh, the work is conducted in the Polytechnic University, um, and at present it's uh, um, at the research and development stage. The first option that we considered was a bit more advanced. So, um, the um, vaccine implies intranasal administration. Which of the vaccines is going to be 
effective, which of them will be registered and will be used in uh, clinical environments um, is still open to question. Um, so thank you for your attention.